Red Sea. I don't know about you, but that was a miracle. It's a miracle that ought to help you and me rejoice because we serve the God of miracles. Amen? I don't know tonight how or why or what purpose you serve in coming to church tonight. I pray it's more than just coming out of habit. That's a great chance to say your name. I pray you've come because you want to meet with your God tonight. I know your God wants to meet with you. And do great and mighty exploits and maybe roll back the waters in your life. Amen. We're going to stand as Brian leads us in some worship that celebrates tonight, Brian. And let's have a victory time in the Lord. And uh, as we stand in our first song, make sure you stand and greet the neighbor beside you. If you don't know them and you're good enough, uh, good looking enough, I say hello to them. Hello. And if you're not good enough looking, we'll say hello anyway. Amen. And let's stand as the Lord leads us. Praise the Lord. God is good. Yes, He is. He's good all the time. God is good.
body. Let me see your hand if you've had a miracle in your body from yes. Jesus. Now we're going to do something really radical in this place. Anybody okay with that tonight? We're going to have a Jericho march that demonstrates the healing of Jesus Christ. I want to be a testimony to everyone in this room who is struggling in their faith for a miracle to be encouraged by the testimony of what God has done in your life. Amen. Yeah. Now, I don't know. My wife can do it. I don't know. Corey can lead it. I don't know. But we're going to sing this together. If you've been healing your body, when you step out and we're going to march around this church as a declaration that our God is a healing God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
a lower back problem while I'm standing in a pulpit in High Prairie, Alberta. Someone else will shout what the Lord done with it. Can someone shout it? What did the Lord do to you? What did the Lord do to you? What did God heal you off last year? What did He heal you off last year? Cancer off the cancer in the head. God healed him last year. Someone else. Someone else will say, Pastor, God healed me of this by 20 years ago. What did he heal you of? It's not too private. You want to shout it for testimony reasons. What did he heal you of, brother? Amen. Did he heal you? And he, and he ministered to you and brought you through. Amen. Amen. Sister? I, I had three surgeries in one month when I was really young. Yes. And one of my kidneys was dead. And for five years, I had to go back every six months. Yes. And at after five years, they declared my kidney was alive and well. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you want to test God's healing power, come on, real quick, real quick. Just, real quick. Just say hypertension, diabetes. I don't care. Just say it real quick. I was at migraine headaches. Lower back. Lower back problem. Not a miracle. Any more miracles? What's that? He healed you in your speech. Amen. Amen. Was he only for your back problem? Amen. Yes. Anything else? Says, 
It's healed. It's all good. Amen. God heals his children. I don't know what you're holding on to to have your miracle tonight. But hold on to nothing other than Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Men are good. Doctors are good. Women are good. That are trained to help us and thank God for them. Yes. But never let us come to a place where we depend on the Lord. They were dependent on the great I am. The Elf and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The one who formed and created you in his image. He has the last say to me. Look at your neighbor. You can be seated on this one. I've come expecting tonight. Can you tell them that tonight before you see it? I've come expecting. I don't know about you, but brother, I don't know about you, but I'm going to bring this place up again. Lord, you want to sit down? You want to sit down? Do what you want to do. Hallelujah. There was a crowd gathered round from all over town They came to see what it was all about There was a sound that came down from the upper room Where the Holy Ghost was being poured out It sounded just like the roar of the mighty wind As it fell on every one of you God, the wind that blew and came And the sky was blowing
When I was growing up, everyone used to say it was a Baptist church. But that's not true anymore. It's a good bit of Pentecostal churches. Are losing their flavor of the Spirit. Holy Spirit, breathe on this church. Breathe on this people tonight from different assemblies. Lord, I don't know what churches they come from in terms of the freedom of the Holy Spirit. God, I pray we'll never quench the moving of your Spirit. I pray we'll never quench the operation of you tonight, Holy Spirit, in our midst. I pray, Holy Spirit, you'll be given freedom and liberty to stir hearts and lives towards the works and the purposes of the cross. I pray you pour in blessings beyond blessings. And, and Lord, I'm reminded of when they came out of that upper room that they were so full of you. And even those around you thought they were drunk. And they said, it's too early in the morning for this kind of behavior. What we have is a new wine, the wine of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Lord, I pray tonight it will never lose the fresh wine, the fresh wine of your Spirit. May we never grow old. May we never come to a place of being content. May we never grow wax in our hearts to a point where we develop apathy, critical spirits, and, and just complain about this or that. And Lord, I pray we serve you in humility. Love and longing for the fullness of God to be revealed in every heart of this room tonight. Let there be a fresh rhema of the grace and the mercy and the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Would you welcome Pastor Bessie, most stranger to many of you? Scripture from Psalm 142, in verse 4, and also 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, and also in the last chapter of the Bible, Revelation 22. Psalm 142 and verse 4. The psalmist said, Look out my right hand and see, for there is no one who acknowledges me. Refuge has failed me. No one cares for my soul. I cried out to you, O oh Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion, and the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise your name. There's still a lot of souls in prison. The righteous shall surround me, for you shall deal bountifully with me. And over to the next text in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but as long suffering toward us, and not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Revelation 22 and 17. And the spirit of the bride say, Come. Let them who hears say, Come. Let them who thirst come. And whoever desires to take of the water of life freely. The last few words of verse 4, Psalm 142, is the text of the message tonight. And the psalmist in despair cries out, No one cares for my soul. And I felt the weight and the burden as the sisters was giving a report tonight as they gathered for the young people, the young ladies to come together. And while there is a hunger in the land and a cry in the land for people to know God, yet we have to ask ourselves the question tonight, how many really cares? about the souls of men. <clears throat> because we got to understand tonight that nothing is as important than a soul. Jesus said that the value of a soul is more important than the whole world. And everything we do in church, everything we do as a Christian, should have redemptive purposes in mind. 
And I am 100% positive tonight that there are people in Badger that are hurting and broken. And young people don't know where to turn. And maybe they're crying themselves to sleep at night and saying, who really cares? Young people that probably from broken homes and broken relationships and trying everything to try to satisfy. But in despair, when the psalmist cried out, no one cares for my soul, I want to let you know tonight from the Word of God who really cares. While there are many people who are in despair, and let me say at the beginning of this message tonight, I just hope and pray, and I'll say this wherever I go, I hope and pray that there's no one who has the love of Jesus Christ, who say that they have the love of Jesus, who are born again, but has an uncaring attitude toward the loss. And let me tell you tonight, and I'm trying to be as brief as I can. God the Father cares about lost souls. In Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18, God the Father says, Come! Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, red like crimson, they shall be as wool. In Isaiah 45 and 22, God the Father says to the whole world, everyone choose everyone, look unto me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. So I ask you the question tonight, does that sound like a God who cares? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do that sound like a God who cares about a lost soul that was sent His Son Jesus to the cross? Not willing, as I read tonight from 2 Peter 3 and 9, not willing that one should perish, not one! satisfied to have God stir our hearts with that same desire that not one person in Badger would perish. In Ezekiel 33, the Spirit of God cries out, God is speaking. He says, turn ye, turn ye! Why will you die, O house of Israel? Turn to me and live! And all and all of your iniquity, the moment you turn to me and repentance and forgiveness, God said, I will forgive you. I will give you life. And all of your unrighteousness, everything that was against you, God said, He will be wiped away, washed away, and cleansed and made whiter than the snow. <coughs> God the Father. Who was so willing to give his son? The Bible says the God. In Romans chapter 8, the God who spared not his only son, but offered him up for us all. Shall he not freely give us all things? I ask you tonight, the God who freely offered his son upon the cross, that you and I might be saved, and our family might be saved, and our town might be saved. Doesn't it sound to you like God the Father cares? And he calls by his spirit, he calls to all the sinners, and not willing that one should perish, but that all should come to repentance, that all should experience salvation. God doesn't delight in judgment. God delights in mercy. But our brother sang about tonight. God delights in grace and forgiveness because he cares. And he went to the depths of his love to send his son to die on the cross. What more can God do than to offer his son as a supreme sacrifice upon that cross because God cares about the souls of men? Jesus, God's Son, 
cares about the lost souls. He's the good shepherd. He gave his life for the sheep. He said in Luke chapter 15, he said, What shepherd? Having a hundred sheep that would not leave the 99 safe in the fall and go for that one that's gone astray and search until he finds it and put it up on his shoulders and bring it back into the fall safely and go back and rejoice and call his friends and call his neighbors and say rejoice with me I found my sheep that yes. was lost come and rejoice yes. friends that's the kind of Jesus we serve that's the kind of Jesus that we serve tonight that cares about souls. That's why in Luke chapter 19, when Zacchaeus, the tax collector, was up in the tree and baby, father people looked at him and said, I'm sure he got no interest in Jesus. I mean, the people of the tax collectors of the day were, were notorious crooks. <coughs> they were bad people. Who might like them? Nobody likes people that's after your money. That's why you don't like the budget. You want more money. The Bible says that Jesus, Zacchaeus had a desire to see Jesus in his heart. You see, sometimes all we see is the externals. All we see is what people wear. All we look at the external. But Jesus looked right in the heart of Zacchaeus. And he stopped and he said, Zacchaeus, aren't you glad Jesus stops? And speaks the name. Says, so Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to go to your house today. Why would Jesus do that? Because he cared. And when he called Zacchaeus to come down from the tree, he didn't have to say, now we're going to say just as I am 52 times. To give you time to make up your mind. He said, Zacchaeus, you come down from that tree. And the Bible says that Zacchaeus of his mind came down in a hurry and met Jesus. That's the kind of Pentecostal services I like to see. That when Jesus calls you, you don't sit down and say, I'm going to come another time. But run to Jesus. Right. Run to the hearts of the one who cares for you more than this preacher can ever express. Yes, the Bible says he brought salvation <laughs> to Zacchaeus' home. He changed his life. Because he cares. And some of you might say, well, did he really get saved? Well, let me give you his testimony. You decide. That's right. Zacchaeus said, Jesus. He wouldn't write Zacchaeus before I did because he said, Eve. Yeah. He said, Eve, but he knew very well that Robin was a good man. He a tax collector. He said, I'm robbing him again. I'm going to pay them back four times. And let me say something tonight. If you've been robbing God from your tithe, you're in big trouble. Right. If you want to use Zacchaeus testimony, now it's not 10%, you're going to pay back 40. <laughs> Some of you that have been robbing God for years, you're going to be in debt a long time. Right now you're getting quiet. I'm not right <laughs> Still the word. We're still here with Jesus. Amen. Still the word. He said, I'm going to pay back four times more. I'm going to give that out loud. In front of seven years, we're doing that for a man and rob. How much would we should write a pay down God and rob them? <coughs> You've got enough in you to still say that, Miss Cruz. And he said, Lord, all that I have. Now we're gotten from 40% to 50%. You think 10% is a lot. He said, all that I am, am I will sell and give to the poor. Oh, yeah. That's when salvation comes. You know, I believe in the kind of salvation that changes people. Jesus cares about the lost. The people that we want to write off in our community can be the next one saved. But Jesus is going to show up. John chapter 4, he went down to the well side to meet a woman whose life was messed up. He had other relationships. Jesus said, 
I must needs go through Samaria. Because there was a woman that nobody else took the time to talk to. But Jesus said, I got to go and talk to that woman. And I got to show her the way of salvation. And I'm going to give her water that she will not find in that well. I'm going to give her water that spring up on the everlasting life. Why would Jesus go out of his way? Talk to that woman. He wasn't even supposed to talk to a woman with a reputation like that. Friends, when you cares enough, you don't mind breaking a few barriers and a few people's opinions to do. You can do things that are radical when your heart is beating with the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus had the religious people mad at him all the time. And we got a lot of Pentecostal religious people too mad all the time too. And they're mad because things are not what they used to be. He's come to seek and to save. That which was lost. He came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. In the garden of Gethsemane, he prayed and sweat, as it were, drink <coughs> lots of blood underneath the weight of the cross. He said, Father, Father, if there's another way possible, if there's another way possible for salvation of man, Lord, take this cup of grief and this weight of sin, take it from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Why did Jesus pray in such agony and sweat, great cups of blood? Because he was taking the weight of my sin and your sin and the sin of the whole world upon his body. He became the very thing that God is. He became a cross for us that we might be free. Because Jesus cares. That's why he prayed in such agony. He stumbled up Mount Calvary bearing the weight of the cross and carrying that old wooden cross until somebody else had to carry it. Friends, uh, he did that because he cares about you and he cares about me and he cares about every soul in Badger. As he hung up on the cross, hands and feet pierced, his back beaten beyond description, his face beaten and bruised and bloody. The Roman soldiers hit him with their fists. And the Bible says that his visage was marred more than the face of any other man. He was beat to a pulp. Yet on the cross, oh Jesus, he looked down as a father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I ask you a question tonight. Does that sound like a Jesus who cares about the souls of men and every single drop of blood? Hold on, my second of my shepherd. Every drop of blood that flowed down the body of Jesus and trickled down that cross and dripped up all that upon that ground that day. Every drop of blood cries out, I care, I care, I care. Every drop of blood that trickled up that cross is crying out, I care. I gave my life, I shed my blood, and the world might be saved. So let me say tonight, friend, people can go to hell. You will go to hell unsaved. But they won't go to hell unloved. Did you hear what I said? People go to hell unsaved, but they won't go to hell unloved. Jesus cares. Oh, I'm not saying that I'm The cross, the sacrifice, the love, the mercy, the grace of God. How can we question that God cares about the souls of men? When we see the sacrifice, all we have to do is to look at the cross. And the cross tells us that he cares, he cares about the souls of men. In John chapter 5 and verse 40, Jesus looked at the crowd. Jesus called them. Jesus said, I will turn nobody away. And yet all that comes to me, I will accept. And hear the sad words of Jesus in John 5 and 40. He said, they will not come to me that they might have life. 
It's not that life is not available. Listen, friends, God's salvation is provided. Every single person in Badger can be saved. Every single person in Newfoundland and the whole world can be saved. God has made provision, but the problem is, like Jesus said in John 5 and 40, I am the salvation. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the one who forgives sin. I'm the one who gives life. But Jesus says, He will not come. That's the only thing that hindering your family and this town from salvation is He won't come. It's not that salvation is not available, it's not that there's no Savior. Because he won't come. He's not willing that one should perish. He wants everybody to be saved. I can't see one doing it right. Why do you want to be saved? Man, when I preached this morning, that message of the unsaved was here this morning, you've got to get your cotton picking mind to run out of church and miss a chance like that. You wanted to get a deal close to that, no matter how good a government comes along. And yet people walk away, walk away. We just got to pray a little bit harder that the blind of the eyes are open because Jesus cares about the souls of men. Jesus, 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 Jesus. The Holy Spirit cares. The Bible says in John chapter 16, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will teach us and lead us and guide us, and he will convict the world of sin. That's right. The Holy Spirit draws people. Do you remember the time the Holy Spirit convicted you? Do you remember the time the Holy Spirit arrested you? Do you remember, maybe you were like the man over on the Labrador Highway that said to his wife when she got saved back a couple of years ago, you can go to church if you like, but I have nothing to do with it. I won't do anything to stop you, but I'm not going with you to that church. And within a week while, she, while he was minding his own business, Driving over the Labrador Highway, Holy Spirit showed up in the truck and began to convict them of his sin. And he had turned over on the side of the road and invited Jesus into his heart. Why? Because the Holy Ghost showed up because he cares. He cares enough to disrupt you from your sleep. He cares enough to take away these lines of food. He cares enough to shake you up and mess you up. Holy Spirit, mess them up, you people in danger. Mess them up. Don't be afraid to pray that way. We're not praying the way we should pray. We're saying a little prayer to be really nice. We need to become undignified. That's right. And be the Lord of this for God. Amen. Most of you heard of Lewis forcing and dear like your last testimony. Finish it up. The season of hockey with the boys down to the local tavern having his beer on a Sunday evening celebrating after the last hockey game of the season and all of a sudden Lewis Forsey ah, began to shake uncontrollable and the beer began to taste like water and tears began to flow down his face and there was a backslidden Pentecostal girl working in the club that evening and says, Lewis, Lewis, what come over you? What's wrong with you? She wouldn't backslidden too long. She probably knew. <laughs> she probably knew what was happening to Lewis. She said, Lewis, what's wrong? He said, I gotta go to church. I gotta go to church and be saved. The Holy Ghost disrupted his party. Why? Because he cares. Hallelujah. He'll show up. Be quiet. Because he cares. The girl was forced to left the club. This young girl dropped them off in the testimony service. And dear Rick, little Sforsky staggered up the hall of the church and fall on his face before God. And God sobered him up in a moment's time. And Lewis Forsey is still serving Jesus today. Why would the Holy Spirit go and disrupt somebody's party with the boys? Because he cares. The Holy Spirit cares. He convicts. He draws. He goes all over the world. And he's doing a good job. Because the last time I checked, there's been 50 or 60,000 Muslims, just Muslims, get him saved every day. Holy Ghost! You might think he's dead in badger. But 
the church ain't dead and all right. There's thousands multiplied, tens of thousands coming to Jesus every day. The Holy Spirit's in the land. The Holy Ghost is showing up and getting a hold of people yes. and shaking them up and convicting them of sin because yes. the Holy Spirit cares yes. about the souls of men. Revelation 22 and 7, the Spirit says, come. Glory to God. The Spirit says, come. And I pray tonight that the Spirit would get a hold of people in God tonight. They would hear a call of God. Come, come, come. Some of you don't believe that kind of stuff. It's too bad for you. You start believing it, we'll see that more often.
stir it up, the Holy Ghost fire it up. And God gives a passion for the souls of men. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to see people getting saved. That's why I said I needed the first time. It's a bit funny, but it wasn't funny to me. When I was in the church a little while ago, a lady came and got saved, and nobody came to church. We're the pastor. Church sit back with her arms folded, some of you. <laughs> <laughs> so I got up and said, listen, somebody just came to Jesus, and the only one on the welcomer is the pastor. What is wrong with you? We're supposed to rejoice. When that shepherd brought the sheep back, what did he do? He called his friends, called his neighbors, come, come, I'm going to have a party. We're going to rejoice. I found my sheep. We Pentecostals need to learn to be happy and rejoice. Give ourselves permission to be happy. We've been lying enough and practicing lying enough and just <laughs> practice the other way for a little bit. Rejoice and be happy and have a good time in church. So when I had my little speech, the gentleman said he would up here in the front. Probably up in his 60s. He's in church for quite a while. So serious as can be. He looked at me and said, Pastor, give us time to get over the shock. It's been that long since someone that might say, we're in shock, Pastor. That's why we didn't go. My Lord help us. I heard another story a little while ago to one of the baptismal services in one of our Pentecostal churches. And he had to go clean up the convicts. Yes. Right. God help him. No wonder they're closing churches. I'm telling you this, I might be simplistic in my approach, but I tell you, I mean what I say and say what I mean. I tell you, if we get back to caring as the bride of Christ and the Spirit of God moves in our heart, there won't be too many churches closing, we'll be building pieces off. That's the kind of God that I serve, and that's the kind of salvation that I want to give to everyone. That's not the kind of faith that we've got. Scroll them off one at a time. Uncle John is gone, his ties is gone, Aunt Mary is gone, and the other five will have a good winter. <laughs> What a bunch of foolishness. <laughs> Jesus, help us to care. Yes. Care for the soul. All you've got to do is care. Because in the spirit and the bride, in the last day, the last few verses of Revelation, the cry has gone forth. The spirit is saying, come. And the bride is not saying, my, oh, my, oh, my. That's the world coming to What's going to happen in hell? That's not what the bride is saying. The bride is saying, come, 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 come to Jesus. That's what they're saying. What do you say? You better be saying what the Spirit is saying. Do it break my heart. Do it break your heart tonight. He used to one time. In fact, the people were lost. And now we've got a lot of Pentecostals who don't want to believe in hell. Listen to the poor Christians because people are going to hell. God help us to care. Just to care. The love of Christ, the love of Christ is shed upon our hearts by the Holy Spirit constrains us, motivates us, moves us. The Spirit of God will open our eyes that we see the multitude like Jesus saw them <coughs> lost and scattered like sheep with old shepherds. Oh, God, stir us up, Lord. Oh. How often have I prayed over the last few years as God has called me to evangelistic and reminded me, Lord, it's not the results you get while you show up. Yes, there will be people saved, but... God reminds me that the word of God go forth and I can stir up five or ten people to get closer to Jesus and become a soul winner and get rid of your town. Then that's it worth the trip as far as I'm concerned. I may never see a soul come to the altar one of evangelistic meetings, but if I can stir you up and go win your town, then I'm telling you it's worth the trip. And you can't pay me enough money for well, that's worth it. <coughs> winning souls for Jesus. God help us to care. To save in glory care. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 15 says of rejoicing. 
in the presence of the angels yes. over one sinner that repents. Who do you think is rejoicing? The grandmother and the yeah. grandfather that's gone on to be with the Lord, who the Bible says in Revelation, on the prayers are stored up. Between the golden files before the throne. I'm telling you, friends, the prayers of your mother and your father and your grandmother and grandfather, they might be dead and gone, but they're rejoicing when their sons and daughters and grandchildren prayed for years. There's rejoicing and made news in heaven when they got saved. And their prayers, their prayers are still alive before the throne of God. They may be dead and gone, and some son or daughter may be still away from God, but if that Mary has gone, and heaven, I'm telling you, her prayers are still at work. Her prayers are still before the throne. A few months before I came to do evangelistic work, I was in my office on a Saturday morning and I was reflecting back to my pastoral days and the first 15 or 20 years, the first two or three uh, churches I was in. I was saying, Lord, I'm when you get a big church, you get busy. And I was kind of repenting to God and saying, God, I think get back to more fasting and more praying. And I said, Lord, I remember the nights. I spent the flat of my face all night. I remember the time. I fasted and prayed for weeks at a time. And I was repenting and tears were flowing in the morning. But I didn't expect the kind of answer from the Holy Spirit. After doing a good job with him, the Holy Spirit whispered and said, Son, do you really think that all that fasting and all that praying and all those times you spent on the flat of your face crying to God, do you really believe that's a waste of time? And the Holy Spirit said, I'm about to pour out the answers to those prayers while you traveled across to the province. I'm going to let you know about your prayers and I got them unanswered. And within two days, I had a man I never met before in my life walked into my office and said, can I pray for you? And when he prayed for me, he prophesied over me. And the same thing that God had told me three days before about the Holy Spirit and about the prayers. He said, when he prophesied, I'm going to give it to you in a nutshell. He said, all the scripture you have built within you to the time you start preaching, God is going to start pouring out that scripture that's built up in you. And you're going to see results. You're going to see people saved and healed even while you're speaking the word. He said, even while you're speaking the word. I said, while you're speaking the word, people are going to be saved and healed and delivered. You will have a chance in some cases to lay your hands on people. God says, I'm going to show up and I'm going to do it. So why do you think I preach the way I do I never had much encouragement to start with. I never had a picnic since I started doing evangelistic work. But I know what keeps me going is the call of God in my heart. I know, I know, I know that God has spoken in my heart. That's why I'm still going. I had pastors, even this year, said lots of churches, oh, Pastor Best, you want to take a church? Dropped in the scene. Threw the boys in the office a few weeks ago. Uh, the church is open. Uh, people don't think we're going to get the, the pulpits filled. How do you feel? And I said, listen, if you think I'm at this because I don't know that, I don't know what else to do, but I'm over 60 years old. I'm just buying time to wait to retire. Then you have another thought coming to you. I said, I got something in my heart that God has placed there. And I know that I'm following the call of God. Sure, I can take a church. But why am I going to take a church if God wants me to do what I'm doing? Save in glory and care. 
Hebrews 12 and 1 says, See, men were compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. There's a lot of people on this road that's cheering you on to glory. I tell you, we're in good company. People say, I've had people say to me, Will I go to hell and have lots of company? Yes, you will, but it will be good company. Not the kind of company I want to keep. Now we're here all in eternity. <coughs> I'm almost finished. The lost in hell. You say, preacher, can you prove that? Oh, yes, I can prove that. Yes, I can prove that. The Bible says that when the rich man lifted up his eyes in hell, being in torment, that he was talking to Abraham. What was the name of the beggar? He said, he Lazarus, Lazarus, he said, Father Abraham, please send Lazarus back to my brothers. I have five brothers. They're not ready to meet God. I don't want them to come to this place of torment. Please send Lazarus back and talk to them. Friends, you think that this preacher shouts a bit? Gets a bit excited, runs around a bit. If you let somebody show up tonight and visit you from hell and preach this message, I don't want to be like a boy scout compared to the way they would preach it. Father Abraham, I don't want my brothers to come to this place of torment. Send Lazarus to warn them. And Abraham said, even though someone rises from the dead, and go and talk to them. I'm not going to listen anymore. Because I've been in some really good Holy Ghost services when the Spirit of God has been convicting. I've been in church after church after church and I preach the gospel and people crying, tears and wiping the tears down in conviction. And the Spirit of God is calling. I don't know what they're waiting for. Time is running out. Yes, it is. General Booth the founder of the Salvation Army said, if I could take my cadets and hold them over the jaws of hell for 10 seconds, that's all the training they would need to be a soul winner. Some of us used to vote for the J.H. Wells. God bless him, he's gone over the glory. Johnny Welsh was a little bit aggressive in the altar service, a little bit aggressive. And some people say, well, well, you know, he dragged people to the altar. Well, the Bible says we're pulling them into the fire. Some of us are not aggressive enough. And if somebody was in a burning building in Badger tonight, I got the feeling you wouldn't go up to that person and say, excuse me, there's flames all around you. Would you like to come? <laughs> you said, I was up for hell there. <laughs> Would you like to come to Jesus, please? We, need, we know the tear of the Lord because we know the tear of the Lord is moving into the Lord. <laughs> because, we, because we know the tear of the Lord. We do what? To sit around and play church, most of us says. Second Corinthians chapter 5 says, We know the tear of the Lord. We know the Persuade me. We persuade you. How much more do you think that people could come back from hell tonight and witness and go to this town? How much they were persuaded? I got a feeling they say a lot more than we're saying. I try my best. But sometimes my best is not good enough. I drive over the highway a good many times, crying as God. I pour it in my heart. And Lord, I'm just tired. People ain't coming to Jesus. I want to see them come to Jesus. See them crying and weeping and they're coming to Jesus. And you know what Jesus says to me every time? You can guess. He says, how do you think I feel? I don't want to die on the cross. I don't want to give them eternal life. They're turning their back. They're not turning their back on you. They're turning their back on me. They're turning their back on salvation. Jesus says, how do you think I feel? God just said, Lord, help us to care. 
lost in hell years. I'll tell you this much. In closing this message, the devil don't care. He's come to steal and kill and destroy and drag people to their eternal hell because the devil knows where he's going. He knows his destiny. And he wants to drag as many people as he can along with him. That's why I don't understand why anybody want to serve a devil like that. One is going to steal and kill and destroy. And Jesus is coming to give life upon that and life eternal. No thanks, no thanks, no thanks. I guess we got to pray a little bit harder. Yes. Preach a few messages with John Edwards with the anointing of God, with his triple soap glasses, and reading out this sermon. And the power of God was in the house, and people were holding on to the pillars. Mm -hmm. Thought they were dragged into hell because the spirit of conviction was upon them. They were screaming while they was preaching. Hell, the hands were on the pillars. Thought they were going to hell. God, bring it back again. Yeah. That kind of conviction. Let hell be real. And we get out of our preachers. I don't believe it anymore. Right. At least you don't preach it. You believe in the you preach it. You don't know how many places. How many times they say, we haven't heard a message on hell. We haven't heard the word hell for a long time in this church. So. I know it's hard to hear a pastor. <laughs> He's worse than I am. That's why he called me. So you get a break. <laughs> Church tonight. Let me ask you one question in closing. It's a very important question. Do you care? Do you care? Well, I know most of your answers say this, Pastor. You know, there's all the cares. We got sons and daughters and children away from God. We know we care. How much do we care? Do we care enough to pray more? Do we care enough to fast more? Do we care enough to show up on the prayer meeting night? Jesus. Come together with God's people and agree together for your family and leave tears on the altar because you're broken over your children and you don't want to see them lost and you join together with 10 or 15 or 20 or whatever they show up on a prayer meeting night. So we, we got to pray. We've got to believe God for a move in our town and our families. We're not going to let the devil rob and have our children. We're going to care. And I'm telling you, Years, I believe 100%. I know it. If we get that kind of care and that kind of compassion, God's going to bring them in. That's the way it always oh, happens down through the centuries. There's no revival that ever came to any church or any individual that wasn't praying. Prayer brings revival. Yes. And when we are revived and when we care, Unsaved will come. The unsaved coming to Jesus is not revival. That's the results of revival. That's the fruit of revival when the church cares, when the church is prayed up, when the church is fired up. Revival will come. And you can't revive something that's already dead. You can't revive the sinner. You revive the church and we bring in the lost. So that's the fruit of revival. People getting saved. I don't know tonight if there's anybody here that's saved. You may be all saved. That's why the most reason why I struggle with this message. But then again, the Holy Spirit reminded me, even though there may not be unsaved, you stir the hearts again and remind my people there's somebody you care about the loss. Our Father cares. His son cares. Yes. Holy Spirit cares. The bride cares. Saved in glory care. Lost in hell care. And the devil don't care. He wants to drag people to hell. So tonight I'm going to do something very simple but yet powerful. You can do it by faith. We normally sing an invitation.
invitation, not only to invite people to Jesus, and if you're here with our Jesus, this is an invitation for you. But judging from the response tonight in this church, I'm not sure there's anybody on saved, but if you are, Jesus is here to save you. But I'm asking musicians to come, and we're going to sing that invitation number. Jesus is passing this way. And I want you to come around the altar. And if you're too tired to stand up, you can sit down. And here's what I want you to do when you come. We we sing it. Every single person that the Holy Spirit puts in your mind. While we're saying Jesus is passing this way, I want you to earnestly pray for your souls. Yes. And in the Spirit tonight, allow the Spirit of God to take you to your family, your neighbors, and people that imagine you know that I don't know. Let the Spirit of God take you to the other people's system. And let's believe God that while we're singing this tonight, listen, this is not crazy. This is faith at work. The Spirit of God is at work. And while you're singing Jesus is passing this way in faith tonight, I'm going to ask you to allow the Spirit of God to show you that he's passing by some of your children and some of your neighbors. And we're going to, in the Spirit, pray. And maybe we can do the reverse as well. Maybe we can pray and ask the Holy Spirit to pass the way. Because I believe that he's all at work. We're just going to pray and believe God. And who knows? Even that while we sing that tonight in faith, who knows? And some sinner will backslide and open that door. <laughs> and be convicted. You see, you might see that's crazy, Pastor, but but I've seen it happen, you see. If I didn't see it happen, it do happen, then God can do it again. That's the problem because, oh yeah, that happened back 20 years ago or 30 years ago. Well, I haven't got time to think to tell you all the times I've seen it happen. But I'm trying to tell you, just to tell you that what I'm saying I've seen happen many times. Right. So why shouldn't I not believe it could happen tonight? Go out while we're in church. It might happen before he goes to bed tonight until I get a call in one morning. A couple Sundays, a couple, a couple Sunday mornings ago in Deer Lake, two people came to the altar in church. And two people came to the altar in their home. Came into church Sunday night and testified about it. Two came to the altar, two came to the altar at home. I don't care what you can say, what you can say. Amen. Just want God to shake us up. We want to care. God cares. He wants to save the town. So let's all start caring. And when we do, God, by His Spirit, will move. Hallelujah. It's going to happen. We believe it. So let's stand together as the musicians lead us. Jesus is passing this way. And allow the Spirit of God to take you tonight and pray across this community and bring our double to our son of maybe thousand miles away. I'll say, oh Jesus, please. If you care, just go where they are to me. Go where they are. Go to my son. Go to my daughter. Go to my grandchildren to me. Maybe Jesus, I use some Christian to go. Talk to him today. Stand. Let's come around the altar and let's say that in faith is there a heart that is willing, longing for pardon today? Hear the glad message we bring you. Jesus is passing this way.
shall be saved. Hallelujah. And Lord, we come against every stronghold in their lives that exalts itself against the very knowledge of God. Father, we come against idols in their lives. Father, we come against pride in their lives. Lord, we come against self-delusion and deception in their lives. We come against the works of darkness and the enemy of their soul tonight. Father, we come against the blinders that's placed upon them. The seed that might be broken and removed in the mighty name of Jesus. And tonight in faith, we join our faith together, Lord. We pull down every stronghold that holds them back from crying out to you and returning to you and coming to you and yielding themselves to you. We pull them down in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we believe souls of the names of men and women that are lifted up in this sanctuary tonight are coming into the household of faith. They are returning like the prodigal again to his father. And father, we just commit these names to you, knowing that you care for every one of them. But Lord, out of that word tonight, may we be shaken to the core that we are also called to care. Just as you're not willing to any should perish, God, I pray that that would be our standard as well. And you will move us. You will push us and propel us. Lord, to be hungry for souls again. God, that we would be your hand extended, ministering to every broken life. The hope of the cross of Calvary. Give us strength and boldness through the work of the Holy Spirit to speak the truth in season and out of season and to declare the plan of God for every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl. Oh, Lord, that none would be lost. Stir your church again. Stir us afresh. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. The gathering of faith. Amen. And amen. Uh, we're going to stand and sing this song. Let's fellowship a little bit as we close our service that we get tonight. Let's sing it again. Christ, the burning winds of flame. Send the fire, send the fire, send the fire.